I think, you know, for me it was a very interesting exercise because I have never been involved in any way in a, in a similar policy dialogue assessment. Um, I think it was very professionally arranged. Uh, there was a, a lot of effort going into the preparation. So when I was out there in Kiev, uh, the evaluation team actually came over, uh, met with me and tried to define what sort of aspects we should look at. Either some you know, general policy dialogue aspects uh, about investment climate or some sector specific issues such as infrastructure or agribusiness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think from the very start we had a very good cooperation and we tried to liaise uh, with each other so to come up with a product that hopefully is useful not only for you know, this particular time but something that has a lasting, lasting value. I would single out five, if I may. Number one is, again, as I mentioned, the articulation of the different aspects of policy dialogue. And this is something that we would like to use, those findings, in defining what is it that we call reform advocacy, which is a constant process, and it's, 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 this advocacy is delivered at various levels, and which is the part of our work that is policy advice. Uh, number two is that it clearly defines already in the case studies, mm -hmm. some of the areas of competence for EBRD, which are the areas where we have developed expertise uh, based on our investments, in-house experience, which are those, let's say, 10 to 12 areas that we should focus on. Uh, number three is that we are doing a mapping of in-house expertise and how we should structure so that we can perhaps create some hubs of excellence or centers of excellence that can, can deliver more kind of consistently our policy advice. Number four is that we have resident offices in all of our countries of operations with one or two exceptions. Now, um, understandably, the country managers are and will be on the forefront of the continued reform advocacy and also play a part in making sure that our policy advice is embedded then in everyday practice, it's implemented, starting with draft policy measures, legislation up to implementation those country managers would need to have consistent messages to be able to deliver them in the areas of competence of the bank and they could also use some training in delivering that policy advice. Number five is that policy dialogue should be recognized, I know we don't have timesheets anymore, but as an activity that is appreciated by the bank, uh, a, an activity that can be measured, especially when it comes to policy advice, and our staff, people who are engaged in policy advice, they have to have their objectives and their performance measured accordingly. These would be, I think, the, the five main uh, findings that I would very much like to take on board and develop further together with the colleagues when we are working on this proposal for enhanced and structured policy dialogue. So the combination of what you think as a many investment institution, but on the other hand, the influence it has on the more broader processes of policy reform in countries such as Ukraine with quite challenging, complicated policy context and multitude of factors being involved. I think the uh, possibility we had to engage with so many counterparts, both in country and in BRD, was an asset which let us came up to the conclusions and hopefully recommendations that are useful for the future work of the bank. And I think there's two channels through which it can have a, an influence in the short term. Firstly, the team in Ukraine and here in headquarters is preparing a new country strategy for Ukraine. And we hope that our reports will have a significant influence on some of the content directions of the, country, the new country strategy for Ukraine. The other big event that's going on is that the VP Policy Office is preparing a paper on policy dialogue, which will go through, uh, I guess, an SPCOM, XCOM approval process and then eventually go to the board. So, of course, we're hoping that our study also has a significant influence on that paper. And, you know, although the study is complete, we as a department remain very ready, willing and able to engage with management on the content of that paper if they would find that useful.